Hey everyone, I wanted to take a little bit of time today and show you guys this Ender 5 Pro. Uh, while it is not my first 3D printer, or neither is it my first Ender 5, it is my first Ender 5 Pro and there are some differences, so let's talk about it. So, I'm going to stop talking for a second, I want you guys to see if you can hear the 3D printer running. If you hear 3D printer running, it is not this printer. It is actually this one. So I only have this running just so you can hear. I'm gonna get a little closer so you can hear this. Now I'm gonna turn it off. So that's compared to the silent Creality 1.1.5 Melzy board that they have added on to this um, instead of the stock one that they had previously. These use TMC2208 silent drivers, so that's why you're not hearing anything. Um, that is one of the biggest, biggest changes of the Ender 5 Pro compared to the regular Ender 5. Other big changes that I've noticed that make a difference uh, and improvement in terms of print quality, as you can see right here, we have the blue Capricorn Teflon Bowden tubing. Um, now what this does as compared to the standard clear whitish translucent one that came with the Ender 5, uh, it has a, a narrower and more consistent diameter on the inside. So when your filament goes through, there's not nearly as much play or give in that filament. So overall it does help improve the consistency of the results. Uh, another addition that they've made here, as you can see underneath, we have these improved and stiffer yellow springs uh, compared to the stainless steel ones that come with it normally these overall they just make the print surface a little stiffer so you're less likely to get any kind of bouncing or movement out of these stiffer springs one of the other improvements that they've made right here they have added on this red aluminum all metal extruder for the uh, top of this stepper motor here to drive through the standard one in the ender 5 is plastic like this guy right here so the the difference here this extruder overall has more tension that it can split apart like this which increases the pressure that's put on the gears and the filament right here so you get more consistent pooling of the filament coming up through um, and this is honestly this the tube and the yellow springs here these are basically the first three improvements that most people make when they buy a regular ender 5 ender 3 or the majority of of a lot of uh, um, lower cost 3d printers i definitely highly recommend if, if you're new to 3D printing, I would rec and you're looking at the Ender 5, the difference is worth it to jump up to the Pro model. Um, but if you've been printing for a while and you're comfortable making these changes yourself, then it probably will be a little less expensive if you got the Ender 5 and made the modifications on your own. I will say though, one of the big differences as I had mentioned previously, is that this comes with the 1.1.5 silent main board inside of here. That alone is probably the biggest reason for most people to go ahead and buy this printer over the regular one. I do believe if I'm not mistaken, getting a replacement 1.1.5 board to swap out of a stock Ender 5, I wanna say it's about $40 or so, give or take. And then, you know, I hope that you're comfortable um, moving some wires. It's really, really not that hard, but some people aren't really comfortable playing around with their printers that much. Looking at the printer itself though, um, the inside, the hot end in here is your standard uh, basic kind of hot end that comes through with most of the Creality printers. It does not, it is not an all metal hot end. It is not an E3, an E3D V6 hot end. This uses the MK8 nozzle. Uh, sorry, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show that to you guys right there. It uses the MK8 nozzle. Those are pretty standard, pretty inexpensive. Um, this comes with the magnetic build tack print surface. So when this print is over, 
all you really have to do is you take and you, it's maybe easier if I do it like this, you take and you just pull this up and peel the whole thing away and then give it a little bit of a flex and the whole thing will just pop off. It's pretty simple. So one of the, the best features of the Ender 5 as compared to other 3D printers, say the Ender 3 or i3 model printers, um, this cubic form here is far more stable, in my opinion, overall, than what the Ender 3 and the other i3 related printers are capable of doing. Uh, and the biggest win in my book is the fact that all the movement comes from the hot end right here. The print bed only goes down or up, whereas with the i3 style, the hot end only traverses the x-axis and the, and the bed traverses the z-axis and the y-axis. So as you can see here, this is doing all the movement. So one of the benefits of that is if you're printing anything that is tall and thin or just tall, if you have a bed that goes back and forth like this, the higher your print goes, the more it's going to wobble. It's just naturally going to happen. That's not really going to happen here because the bed only goes up or down. And I wanted to, I did this on purpose, but I put this on my bar because I wanted to show you guys that this is actually pretty stable. And if you take a look, the feet are just barely on there. So it doesn't really move. It's got a, it's, it's pretty stable. While I'm down here, I wanted to show you guys, this is where the micro SD card goes. Um, the printer does come with a micro SD card with a few model prints on it. It comes with a pretty decent amount of filament for your first print through. I can tell you when I got my first Ender 3, uh, the amount of filament that I got was not even enough to finish the dog test model that came with it here. So they definitely added a little bit extra to make things easier for you. Uh, the print quality on this out of the box is surprisingly good. I did nothing to this other than put the machine together, make sure the bed was leveled or trammed properly depending on, on uh, which term you like to use. And then I just loaded it up from the machine here and I hit it and I hit print. Um, as a little bit of, a, of advice from doing this a few times now, I will say that when you get the Ender 5, a lot of people are gonna tell you to level or tram your bed. And what that means is you want the hot end print, the hot end, the little guy going there pushing the filament through or heating the filament up, heating the hil filament up, excuse me. You want that to be equidistant to the bed anywhere it goes. So you wouldn't want your bed, you want your bed to be flat. You wouldn't want it to have like an angle because obviously your prints aren't gonna be good. Um, so a lot of people, they immediately start to try to level the bed here by messing with the different knobs. And what I would recommend to you after doing this a few different times now is when you get it from the factory, uh, these screws, these guys right here, they're actually tightened all the way up. So it's, it's kind of going to be as flat as it can be from the factory. And what I've noticed is rather than start playing with these guys, my recommendation is to come back to the Z limiter switch over here. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. So this little switch up here, this guy pokes that and that's when it knows to stop the bed. So if you actually just adjust this and you keep doing an auto home on the LCD menu, so you adjust it, do an auto home and see if it's, if you can take a piece of paper and pull it in between. It's just you wanna have like the slightest grab, but you can just kind of keep raising this up. It's perfectly flat. I know it's kind of hard to see, but if you look at this little nut, you can see the top of the screw sticking out just a little bit. When, the, when I first got it, the screw doesn't stick up at all. So basically this is what it ends up hitting. So I played around with it a little bit and I extended the screw up a hair more and that little bit is just enough to make it so it prints pretty nicely. And, and like I showed you guys here originally, this guy was the very first print that I ever did with this printer. All I did 
was adjust that screw in the back. Again, not this Z lead screw right here, but this guy. Adjust this little knob and keep playing with it until it feels smooth. Or uh, until, you know, you put a piece of paper in between the bed and you slide that back and forth and it feels, has like a little bit of a grip to it. You don't, if, if you can't move the paper, it's too tight. All right, so moving on, I apologize. I wanna make sure I just kind of give this the, the review that it, that it deserves because I'm, I'm very, very impressed with this printer. So putting it together was, was very straightforward. Um, like I said, this is my first Ender 5 Pro, not my first Ender 5. So I've put a couple of these together right now, or by now, um, and really, you, can, you could probably have this thing, whole thing put together in 15 minutes, if you've done this a handful of times. If it's your first time through, don't, don't do a speed run. Take your time. Make sure everything's good and solid. You know, as you're going through and you're tightening all these different screws up, kind of do the same thing that you do when you're changing a car tire. You don't start over here and make this as tight as you can and then make this as tight as you can. You put them in, you finger tighten them, and you kind of just go through. You know, I like to do like a little bit of a star here almost across, whatever. Uh, and I finger tighten these. I finger tighten everything you put this guy down on top you finger tighten that and then i'll go back through and i'll tighten everything up with the allen wrenches that come with it as you can see it's it's really it's really this easy you take the base put down the four posts bolts go up then you take after the bolts are on you put the uh the top piece this is all fully assembled you just drop that on you bolt that in you put on the deck right here two bolts, I'm sorry, the, the Z rails, sorry, I lost my words. You put, there's two bolts here, two bolts in the top up there, and then a couple of screws that go in to hold the bed on right there. That's the long and short of it. It's really, really easy. The LCD display, you screw that guy on right there, and then you just put your cable in right there, and that's good to go um, as far as other things oh sorry should have said this power buttons right here flip that guy on SD card goes in here and then there's a mini USB port right here um, I, I'm not entirely sure if this one comes with a bootloader already burnt on it but it might if it doesn't you can plug a US or you can use an Arduino Uno and flash a bootloader on here and then you can do things like upgrade the Marlin firmware and change a bunch of different stuff. If you're, if you're, if you've never played with anything like that, just get used to the printer before you try to start making modifications. That's my biggest piece of advice to anybody new to 3d printing, get used to the printer, understand how all the different components work together because I've definitely gone down, um, some black holes where I start printing something, I start playing around with things. Next thing I know, I have a printer that I just cannot recover from. So do yourself a favor, get used to the printer first, and then just kind of go from there. Hooking up all the cables, they've made it very, very straightforward. I know this probably isn't the easiest to tell right here, but basically all the cables are color-coded and they have snap-ins that go together. You don't have to wire anything up on the main board at all if you don't want to. There are also words on here. So this is the nozzle heat, and then you would just find the uh, appropriate on the other side, the appropriate cable on the other side, click the two together. The LCD, as you can see, I got a print going right now. You can see I'm an hour 53 minutes in, about 28% done. Current fan speed, heat of the bed, hot end heat, and then your flow rate right here. So you've got all kinds of different options. I, I can't do a whole lot of stuff right now because it's in the middle of a print, but basically this is where you go to make all the different changes. There's a lot of other information online. I don't want to go into that right now uh, just because I know that that information is already there. So something else to note, if you are an American purchaser, one thing that you will want to do here, this little switch over here. So it comes set at 230 volts. I apologize if that's not in focus. It comes at 230 volts. You're gonna to wanna to switch that over to 115. Again, that is in the United States. Uh, overall, like I said, this thing is just really, really amazing uh, for, for what it costs. It's really great first 3D printer for most people. The build surface, I want to say, I apologize, I don't remember this off the top of my head here, but I want to say it's 220 on the X, 220 on the Y. 
and then your Z up and down, you have about 300, 300 uh, and that's millimeters for all that. So I can also tell you that stock like this, I have successfully printed with PLA, ABS, and PETG. Um, I've, I've switched to like direct drive for TPU and other things. Uh, I think that basically covers it here. I guess the only other thing I didn't mention is this spool holder comes with it. Um, that goes on there, very, very simple. I hope this review has helped you guys out. Um, like I said again, this is definitely one of my favorite printers here. And I guess I could have just explained that this is what I mean by an i3 style printer. The print head only goes left and right. The bed comes back and forth. So yeah, the kinematics on this one, which is how everything moves and works together. Very, very good. Very pleased overall. I hope this review helps you guys out. Hopefully it helps uh, give you a little bit more knowledge on your purchase here. Um, feel free to ask any questions and I'll try to respond back. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a great night.